honestly, does anyone feel like graveyards are just going a little bit too far right now in modern? Well, I mean, I've been having this feeling and I think certain showings of mill have really solidified that for me, that concept for me. So I wanted to go over a topic that I really, I feel like I bring up every couple of months or so. It's your boy Shaf, aka that mill guy. And I want to talk about Soul Guy Lantern and Leyland of the Void. Specifically in regards to how I think it's secretly just a time to potentially push surgical extraction out of our main board. Put it in the sideboard, maybe just play extirpate, whatever it might be. But it might just be that modern is so bad for mill right now that we need to be playing these all out exile effects. Let's talk about it. So going into it, I want to talk about a third place list from user Delthar. Now Delthar uh, came in third place in this challenge and then uh, placed 20th as well in a subsequent challenge. So they're doing really well. And Mill, as you can see on the right side here, is doing really well on its own as well. Just, you know, consistent 5-0s. Uh, we're seeing it in the challenges, whatever, whatever. But the key to this list that I want to bring up right now is that Delthar decided to go with the meta call of four soul guide lanterns. Now, the idea here is that you have decks that use the graveyard for value, right? We're, we're not in a world where, uh, where, where faithless looting is taking over the meta. We see dredge, we see reanimator style strategies using that. We, we do see reanimator, but they're using the white blue faithless looting out there. So we see a bit of a difference in how it's being used. It's being used for value. The problem is that that value is something hard for Mill to overcome. And so with that in mind, there's not a lot of places for single target removal. We see decks like Titan where we're actually already favored. We can get there with the archive traps and Tasha Sidious Laughter is actually not that bad against a deck that plays a plethora of lands as well. So that's fine. We don't necessarily need surgical. And then we see a dip in the playability and the viability of something like Green Tron, right? So that's going to be very hard as well for a deck like that to do well and then for us to do well because that's something we prey on. So we start to see a shift in that. So we then see a rise in decks that, as we'll go over, use the graveyard for value through cards like Dragon's Rage Chandler, Delve cards, um, cards like Croxa, and things that use it for value, not necessarily they, they need it forever that's their crux piece so going over the modern metagame itself we see decks like again death shadow um the murktide decks heck even you know thopter combo yogmoth all these decks that use the graveyard to some extent we see decks like living in that use it as a crutch that is their primary angle of attack so i'm thinking maybe it's the time that mill should just be playing all out exile effects we should, we should just be saying goodbye to the graveyard and going race, 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 hitting our opponent in the face. The first deck that I'm thinking about is the Yawgmoth combo deck using cards like the Geralt Messengers to combo out, the Strangle Root guys that re-enter the graveyard, the Young Wolf that is so powerful in this metagame right now because Young Wolf blocks Ragavan so well. Uh, so cards like this that use the graveyard really, really well, um, including the Yawgmoth triggers to kind of get that stuff going. So we see cards that actually do really well when it comes to that, and especially in the sideboard, you see cards like Endurance, which helps to stop mill. If we mill them over, try and take over certain combo pieces, they're going to have Endurance to reshuffle their graveyard. But if we have an all-out exile effect, then we can stop that. We can control that. We can make them play at our tempo. I can, I'm can. i also thinking about, obviously, the Living End deck, which you know is, is primary goal is to put cards in their graveyard, reanimate it through Living End, and this, this deck would just get shut out. Right, this deck would just get shut out, especially with something like Leyland of the Void that gets around their Leyland of Sanctity. You remember that Soul Guide Lantern also does so as well, but some people are playing Tormod's Crypts and things like that, which don't hit that. What's nice about the Leyland of the Void is that it gets around the Leyland of Sanctity and gets around the Endurances and forces them to play things like Foundation Breaker and Force of Vigor to try and deal with these things. They, they have to overboard to try and deal with the things that we're doing. Finally, the last deck I want to look at is heck, an Assault Loam deck. That's right, Assault Loam came in fourth place in a recent modern challenge. This deck is crazy. It, it, it's using, obviously, the life from the Loam engine, Tarmogoyf's Renin 6, and just hitting you in the face with value lands. It's got Beseju in there. It's drawing cards uh, with the Forgotten Cave, and obviously, it could dredge away with life from the Loam. There is so much value happening here. Assault Loam. This is 
Uh, so again, another deck that does use a graveyard through Dragon's Ray Chandler, Tarmogoyf, Life from the Loam, Ren and Six, all of that stuff, you know, like it uses all of this as a long game engine. We see the graveyard slowly and slowly evolving in our favor. And maybe that's something we can abuse. So the first card I want to talk about is going to be Soul Guy Lantern, which is the four of that Delthar played. And what's nice about this card, again, for many of you astute viewers here, Entering the battlefield, you immediately get that ETB. So in a lot of decks where you need to snipe out a, a certain piece, which we'll talk about in a second, you get to do that. And then if you would need to wipe out the whole graveyard, you have an activated ability that does not cost mana. And that's the key there, as well as saying each opponent. So getting right, uh, getting around Leyline of Sanctity against the dredge decks or the living in strategies. And then finally, against the matchups where you don't necessarily need it, it becomes a build your own Mishra's Bobble with Luros of the Dream Den, paying one, sacking it, and drawing a card and being able to recur that and again with that etb graveyard effect that you can use over and over again allowing it to be multifaceted at different points in the game it still allows us to play around uh play and play around drown in the lock so in the sense that we can still play drown in the lock in our main board because we don't necessarily have to activate or use the soul guy lantern we can just use it to redraw it can just be a two mana cantrip uh, one mana to play it and then one mana activate it so that's what's nice with drown in the lock with specifically the decks that i'm thinking about so if you look at the grixis death shadow list i'm thinking about a card like croxa titan of death's hunger now if we just go back there's obviously going to be other cards that we can help uh enable such as uh, or unenable such as their unholy heat so that they might not be able to kill our ashiox or our uh ruin crabs and then are their dragon's rage channelers we also have things again like their croxes but we won't really be able to modulate their drown of the locks which is kind of unfortunate but we can also potentially hit their coligan's command if they go to return a creature we can respond get rid of that and obviously they have their allures of the dream down recursion but Crox is going to be the big uh, hit here. This is going to be the card that we really lose to in the Death Shadow matchup. In many ways, you become the control deck. You remove their threats. You take it slow. You play Atasha's. You win the game. Croxa is what stops that, ruining our uh, kind of taking apart our hand, getting rid of our resources, and preventing us from winning the game that way. So it's nice that we're able to deal with something like this uh, very easily with a simple ETB, especially because they're only playing two copies and as well after that as i mentioned we get to stop loros of the dream den with something like soul guy lantern getting rid of it one shot and, and usually that's that's all you need sometimes after that they have the loros you're then able to kill it you have the time to kill it and then you don't even need to put other cards in their graveyard because they don't really have a way to do that so then you can have the time make sure this value is minimized soul guy lantern very multifaceted there the next card i want to talk about is going to be ley line of the void and i think this might be a time to consider Consider Lay Down of the Void in the main board. I, I know, I know. Look, it's sacrilegious and it's probably bad. But again, understanding the concepts of where modern is right now, maybe this could be really good. Again, Lay Down of the Void, a card that hasn't been played in a very long time. For some of you uh, viewers of this video, might not even haven't, you know, you might not have ever played with this card. If it's in your opening hand, you put it on the battlefield, you're not casting it, uh, and it's essentially a rest in peace effect for just your opponent. So Leyland of the Void, ups and downs being that, okay, so you need to ideally play four copies in your sideboard. You want to maximize the um, chance of you having one in your opening hand. The problem is the subsequent copies then become dead. You really don't have the opportunity to cast a four man enchantment that doesn't do anything when it enters the battlefield. It doesn't redraw. It doesn't have any other factor other than exiling. So it's really just being in your opening hand. Beyond that, we don't really have a way to get rid of these cards. In a lot of ways, when we draw these cards, we are being time walked. We're not actually drawing anything. So that's another thing to consider as well considering that faithless looting is not in modern right now it's not legal in modern so graveyard decks aren't again that all in they're simply value-based strategies that are using it for things like delirium or uh, bringing creatures back it's not the primary plan so it's hard but there's so many of these effects so many of these decks then it might just be the time so if we look at something like murktide region what the the murktide decks what is our primary problem in this deck so it's good. Okay, obviously Murktide region, right? That, that has to be very clear. We enable that plan so easily. Murktide region. The second problem is going to be Dragon's Rage Chandler in terms of the graveyard. Obviously, it's going to be Ragavan, but then, you know, in terms of graveyard talk, Dragon's Rage Chandler being a 3-3 flyer, we're not able to chump that. And then lastly, the Unholy Heats. Unholy Heat at its base can kill Hedron Crab, but Unholy Heat being one mana killing our ruin crab actually matters because then we're not able to chump block the Ragavans, chump block the Dragon's Rage Chandlers, and things like that. So we see this deck taking advantage of the graveyard in a lot of ways 
and we can use that to our strengths and play Light in the Void, considering that this color pie specifically is going to have a very hard time dealing with the enchantment subtype. Looking at their sideboard, blue doesn't really deal well with the enchantments. You can see the main board Otawara, which can deal with that, but especially red, it's an artifact hate type of color. So as you can see, looking across this whole board, it's really just the Otawara that can deal with the Leyland of the Void. So that can be a great way to shut out their graveyards. Now, what I wanted to talk about here is you, many of you already understand the power of Leyland of the Void. The problem is overcoming its downside of, like I mentioned, being time locked when you draw it, having multiple ley lines. What can we do to take advantage of that? So the first card that many people used to use was Collective Brutality. Collective Brutality being extremely relevant these days, minus two, minus two, uh, again, killing a Ragavan, killing a DRC before it gets turned on. There's a lot of X2s in the format right now as well. Getting rid of all of that, as well as uh, draining two, so your opponent loses two, you gain two. This can be a great way to surprise a Death Shadow opponent that might be a little too low. It's a niche scenario, but it does happen. And then finally, revealing your opponent's hand for an instant or sorcery. Lots of counter magic out in the format, lots of removal in the format, so collective brutality. All of its modes usually are going to be very, very uh, active for you, and you're going to be able to escalate, discard multiple cards, such as Leyline of the Void, to get to that. The last card I want to mention is something, you know, shout out to Blitz MTG for this one, trying out March of the Wretched Sorrow. Now, this is a cycle out of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, and as an additional card, uh, uh, as an additional cost to cast this spell, you may exile any number of black cards from your hand. This spell costs two less to cast for each card exile this way. So this is going to be a great way to pay a black exile ley line of the voids to then increase the power of this card. You're then able to deal X damage to target creature or planeswalker and gain X life. So pitch your ley line of the voids, gain some life, destroy a Teferi, destroy a Ragavan, whatever it might be. And especially in the late game when you're drawing them dead, this is going to be a fantastic use of your mana uh, for those dead cards. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to be able to, you know, kill Lurosis, but... Layla and the Void shuts off your ability to play Luros as well. So that's something to remember that although you're now trying to get the decks that are playing the graveyard to play on your terms, you're saying, okay, no more graveyard. You're not actually beating them. It's not like Dredge, where if you play Layla and the Void, they're pretty much just done and out. You're not grinding with them. They're done. The problem is with these decks, you're going to be grinding out. So losing that Luros grind factor is actually a relatively big problem. It, it really is. It's not like your Exile effect is Ashiok Dream Render, which can grind, which mills 20 over a total, stops your opponent from searching. Effects like that are really important. You just don't get access to this card. So that's going to be a major downside. And as well, we lose access to things like Drown of the Lock and Visions of Beyond. Having that in our main board, right? Like we're not exactly vintage where main board Leyline of the Void is actually kind of good because you have the graveyard decks and the crazy combo decks, whatever, taking advantage of, uh, so easily of the graveyard that something like that is just free value and then you obviously do have very good ways to draw through your deck use these resources we're not vintage so visions of beyond losing that ability for us is going to be very detrimental and we're probably just gonna have to replace it with another cantrip what that would be who knows it could be consider which gives us some uh card selection which probably end up being what the select uh choice is it's not going to be serum visions we probably just want something at instant speed and really that's going to be the end of the discussion i i really just want to push this idea out there put it back out there and it's a discussion that keeps coming up so i wanted to make sure it's ever in everyone's mind let me know what you think is main board laying out of the void you know going to be a thing I, I you know i'm not sure i don't think so it's a possibility but i think main board soul guide lantern is definitely something to consider right now especially with modern being so hostile towards um mill itself and just modern being very you know varied it's nice to have cards that have optionality being able to exile the graveyard as well as redraw if you need it options are key and uh, having different lanes to win the game is going to be key as well. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And we're going to end off this video there. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Remember that even the impossible is possible. And as we ponder that thought, I hope you'll join me next time as we take a glimpse into the unthinkable.